want your blood. I want your soul. No, no, the thumbnail was not an unsafe act. We weren't even on the same alignment, nor was there any ammo or magazines, but it got the point across. Now that we got that out of the way for the crybabies, let's get the story rolling. A few years back at the range, my buddy wanted to try the VG6 muzzle brake on his rifle. While on the barricade, his handguard restricted him from getting the device to pass through clearing the slot, and when he fired, the concussion splattered the barricade, tearing up his finger a bit. Nice hit. Caught that one. Hold up, man. Using multiple rifle setups throughout the day, hours later, I had forgot about the incident and asked him if I could try the device myself. He was so kind to let me, and while on the barricade, I also got a little taste of the action myself. Slow down there. I instantly knew what had happened, and after finishing the drill, I got to spend an hour picking out wood chips and spray paint chunks from my arm. Whoa, whoa. Mm. That's a big piece. Oh, that's actually really big. That's what she said. Oh. Oh. Whew, that's a good one. You're gonna keep that, right? Maybe. I wonder if there's any more in there. I don't think so. That's a good one. That was a nice intact piece. It'll look good as like a, um, a nose stud. This could be avoided by simply keeping the muzzle behind the barricade to avoid external flash or making sure you're aware of your muzzle's location. People often hyper-focus on the target and the optic, forgetting that the muzzle is about to wreck their day. A barricade is a good way to teach muzzle awareness since we can't predict where we may have to shoot from. As you get to the barricade, simply take a quick glance with your non-dominant eye to make sure your muzzle is clearing any obstacles. It takes a fraction of a second and eliminates danger to others and self. I've had multiple backpacks and cases shot out by friends who didn't watch their muzzle location below the optic and muzzle awareness on shorter barrels like this 10.3 inch is also a must. While shooting, my girl had her index finger close to the muzzle and after the first shot, realized she had almost lost a fingertip from the muzzle blast. The lesson was forever imprinted on her mind, but others may not be so lucky, which is why you should make it a point to take the business end serious. The amount of pressure coming out of these muzzle brakes have enough force to bend metal like this cloud defense light mount. Even with a suppressor on the muzzle, you may have blast protection and some extra length, but here you can see my buddy burn his leg while transitioning on this hot summer day, resting the hot right on his bare skin. And now you know why I run my lights left side on my long guns and run flash hiders over brakes. I tested a few muzzle brake designs that came with my suppressor, and after seeing what they do, I gave up on them. Ready. Stand back. Oh no, that doesn't tilt. That's good to know. Yeah, look at this. All kinds of crazy stuff can happen when using firearms, so also selecting to safe with your finger off the trigger when moving is key. Here a new shooter did not select back to safe and had his finger on the trigger while moving and had a negligent discharge. Luckily the muzzle was in a safe direction downrange, but I happened to catch this on film giving you a real life example of why you won. Keep your muzzle away from any person or thing you do not intend to damage or destroy. Two, keep your finger off the trigger until your sight is on target. And three, always select back to safe when off target. I always select back to safe in between all movements because it takes a split second, although repetitive but prevents an accidental discharge whether you get your rifle caught on your gear or you possibly fall while moving. My buddy here was running to a barricade and the front of his boot caught the ground, tripping him up a bit. Luckily, he was on Don't safe do. with his Don't finger do. off the trigger. This isn't safe, exclusive right? to the civilian sector either. Many who have served may have seen this happen to a fellow soldier considering the amount of gear you're carrying and the types of terrain you have to navigate. This is why I'm particular about always flipping the safe and keeping the finger off of the trigger when moving to positions far apart or even within the same location. This may seem like a non-issue if the only time you've spent shooting is on a flat range from a fixed position, but training on the move in random terrain increases the likelihood of these possibilities. Murphy's Law states that what can go wrong will go wrong, as well as Cole's Law. Cole's Law is a flavored, thin-sliced cabbage you can find in your local deli section. 
Combining muzzle awareness, finger off the trigger, and selecting the safe is the professional way forward. And if you think you're too cool to do this, I don't want you on my team, nor shooting with me at all. When professionals have to work in confined space together, they have to trust that you are just as safe as they are, so that they can focus on the threat downrange, not the one shooting next to them. Muzzle awareness also ties into other important lessons called Aside from up-close objects, anything that's in front of the bullet's trajectory out to distance is also why we should be aware of the bullet's location in relation to the optic that usually dominates our focus. One day, while slicing the pie to find a hidden threat that my buddy staged, I tried to keep my exposure to a minimum both horizontally around the wall and vertically to have the advantage and when I took my shots, I kept hitting over the target. I like to think I'm a good shot and took a few more until I got the hit. After looking like a hack to my friends, I examined the concrete barrier in front of me that I had been skipping the round off of the block, sending the projectile over the target. These higher mounts specifically increase the risk of this, which I have mentioned in older videos about high mounted optics, including the RMR on top of the ACOG when shooting behind cover or objects. Under this magnification, the danger of muzzle awareness gets even more risky since your eye and mind get sucked into the view on target. You may think this isn't important when shooting out in the wide open during flat range training, but there's too many examples to be found under pressure and stress where muzzle awareness and height over bore get neglected, leading to wasted rounds and possible damage to self or teammates. In this video, you can see the person striking the tree in front of them because they're hyper-focused on the target and under extreme moments of survival mode. Ironically, I was having a range day session with my buddy Emmett from Team Anvil, an Ohio-based training company, and this exact thing happened. Shooting from a concealed position may only give you a small window to identify the threat, find a hole in the obstruction, and take a shot using the proper hold based around your optic height and zero. This LP1 and Unity Riser combo brought this optic to a 3.47 inch height above bore. The only place he could find a clear shot on target forced his muzzle to be exactly in the pathway of this branch. Never bore. Yeah, you're going right through the center of that branch. <laughs> <laughs> that. Good group. Tree strike. Tree oh, strike. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Hit Hold him on. again. Now you can get him. Practicing shooting off angles on a barricade will help you get that muzzle out of the path of the obstruction while maintaining a proper point of aim on target. Just know that it will change your trajectory like I show in my shooting off angle video. I think it would be wise to make it a point to be more aware and also learn about how your optic height affects your trajectory while taking shots, especially using higher mounted optics. With the ever-growing inventory of optic mounts and optic heights like the Unity 226 and even higher mounts like the Lerna or Hydra mounts from GBRS, and to include a setup that I've made several videos on, the top-mounted ACOG RMR combo, the height over bore becomes even more of a concern. Looking and or shooting through small windows of opportunity may be impossible, or can at least increase the risk of an under-optic strike. We'll cover these trajectories later, but first, knowing how low your projectile starts on its path to glory is also important when it comes to close range engagements. If we start back at around 25 yards, which is where this red dot is zeroed, you can see I'd impact exactly where my daughter point of aim is. As I close in the distance to 25, you can see that now my impact will be lower than my point of aim since the projectile will have not traveled up to my zero point, which is set for 25 yards. As I get even closer inside of 10 yards, you can really see how low my impacts will hit. Some reticles compensate for this, like the EOTech, Hollow Sun, and LP1 Circle Dot, by using the lower point of aim on the ring at this distance. But I'm going to be honest. If a few threats popped out on you, you're not going to have time to perfectly use this lower point of aim to get a magical T-box shot on each one before you get smoked. Mathematically, they have fire superiority, and if you're lucky, you'd get one before you get smoked. In this scenario, you'll most likely use a non-standard response, also known as a mag dump, into as many of them as you can, since adrenaline and survival mode would take over. This is one of the few situations where fun mode is very useful. Since this isn't readily available to us, training on target transitions when there is more than one threat is the best we can do. If you do have the time, however, and a low probability shot is necessary like a T-box or a pelvic shot under body armor, you may want to know where your impact will be in relation to the reticle. 
I had a special friend run some mechanical offset drills with us. They help build mind and muscle memory to see where your rifle zero will impact inside of 25 meters. Starting back and moving in, you will see where you need to adjust your point of aim up to a point blank distance, and then alternating back to our starting location at 25 meters will help you burn it into your head and the target's head at the same time. Repetition is key here so that you form a special awareness of the relationship between target size and where to quickly get a hold to snap the shot because we don't have time to think this close to danger. Making it second nature is what he was helping us master here and if you decide to run higher mounts, this closing distance to point of impact gap is more drastic so you should one, practice this drill and also know what happens beyond your zero distance using super high mounts. Cool. Each mount will have a different offset depending on the height, so don't expect each one to behave the same way. Also know that a higher mount will throw off certain reticles like the EOTech dot and ring, where usually the lower point of aim here is used for close targets when you increase the height above bore like this learner mount. We'll talk a bit more about this mount later, including the ACOG piggyback setup, because once you master your offset up close inside your first zero intersection distance, it's time to go back a bit further and find out what happens after your zero intersection, especially using higher mounts like this new learn amount. When buying an optic, they used to tell us what the measurement was from the center of the bore or the barrel where the projectile is up to the optical center or center of your aiming point. In this case, the EOTech. The original EOTech had an optical center over bore of 2.6 inches and the taller EOTech EXPS3 has an optical center or height above bore of 2.8 inches, making it very easy to input in a ballistic calculator to run some trajectories. Now we have risers like this one from Unity under this XPS2 bringing us to a 2.06 inch height above rail. You see, companies are now giving us the height above rail measurement to the optical center, so we have to remember an additional 1.21 inches from the bore to the rail. With this lower XPS, we'd have a height over bore of 3.27 inches overall. And with the higher EXPS3 on this same riser, we'd have a height over bore of 3.47 inches for our ballistic calculator. Always remember to add this barrel bore to rail height when using modern mount heights or when using no optic at all. Now if you watched my older two-part zeroing videos, I gave you some common measurements using the absolute 2.6 inch, the one-third co-witness at 2.8 inches, the 1.93 mount totaling 3.14 inches, and the Unity 226 mount totaling 3.47 inches above the board, if you want to see those trajectories. But I want to cover the newer 2.91 inch learn amount trajectories that come to a 4.12 inch height above bore and the even higher ACOG piggyback height above bore of 4.55 inches. I didn't see on the GBRS website anything about recommended zeros, and people have been asking about optimal zeros for the piggyback setup. I hear a lot of people just using a 100 yard zero on these setups, but they don't exactly act the same. Starting with a 16 inch barrel shooting M193 55 grain cartridges with a muzzle velocity of 3132, let's try the Unity 226 mount, the Lerna 291 mount, and the ACOG piggyback all zero to 100 yards and see what happens downrange. If we lay them side by side, remember that as the mount gets taller, the bore will start lower when we align them all on the same point of aim axis. Regardless of the starting height at the bore, each will be zero dead center at 100 yards, and here we can plot out each bore height below the optic. The unity at 3.47 inches below our point of aim, our learn amount at 4.12 inches below, and our ACOG top RMR position at 4.55 inches below the point of aim. As the projectiles head out to 100 yards, the distance we zeroed them at, they will then all begin their own path since the bore axis angles were not the same. Here we have our max ordinates coming in for each optic, all three under one inch above our point of aim out to 150, and then we head back down in elevation to 200 yards. At 200, only the unity setup has a drop more than an inch, and the other two are inside a one inch drop at 200. At 300, we see the unity setup is starting to drop a bit more than the other two since it had the lowest angle trajectory of the three. This is magnified a bit more as we head out to 400 if you care to shoot out this far, but you may be surprised that a 100 yard zero on these higher optic setups perform very well out to 300 with overall group sizes of 8.83 inches, 7.71, and the ACOG RMR winning with a 7.07 inch group out to 300. If you only care about 200 as your max distance, the Unity actually wins with its low max ordinate with the group size of only 3.65 inches out to 200 yards. Pretty impressive. Now if we go back and make the mistake of zeroing each of these higher mounts to a 25 yard zero, you can see we would have a much higher angle on our trajectory leading to some bad news. So let's just say no to this idea. I wouldn't use the 36 or the 50 really since they yield larger groups with a higher max ordinate than the 100 yard zero does with these higher mounts. 
Back to the 100 yard zeros. If you want to have a similar trajectory and group size out to 300 with each of these three setups, then you actually want to zero the Unity to 80 yards, the Lerna to 90 yards, which should get you pretty close to the ACOG RMR combo zeroed at 100 yards since they all incrementally get taller, thus zeroing the lower mounts back a bit to equalize the group sizes here if 300 is your overall goal. Running this 100 with my ACOG top dot works perfect. You still have a slight hold at 300, which is doable, just like using a regular dot. But honestly, I have my ACOG for that right underneath. Now that we all understand these higher mounts need to be zeroed a bit further out for tighter group sizes, but also for safety and efficiency, these two can get the mount they want for their own reasons and not have to stress about where to hold, whether in dynamic positions or regardless of the distance to target. Just a center hold and go. Heads up sight picture or night vision, whatever. I won't judge you for the mount you pick, but I will judge you if you're running around with a 25 meter zero with these higher mounts. As far as the ACOG RMR users go, just zero to 100 yards and you'll appreciate the ease of use. Just remember to practice your offset once you get inside 50 yards or so, since using the 4X is close won't be as fast. As far as this video goes, I want to give people some things to think about when it comes to always selecting the safe when not on target, being aware of your muzzle's location, direction, and what's around it. And most importantly, know your zeros through and through. Not only close distances, but after the initial zero out the distance. I get asked about ballistic calculators, so know your muzzle velocity, your height above bore, and download applied ballistics in the description and start playing around with it until you get the perfect zero. I can't do everything for you now. Huge thanks to all 24,000 subscribers that have stuck around. I got some new optic videos that I'm actually super pumped about. I just need to get a few more things wrapped up first. Until then, watch these video links popping up on screen right about now. Leave him right there. Oh yeah, he might go. There he is, stay back. Careful moving. Stick bug. Pretty cool.